Hello everybody, welcome to Vigilant Citizen. My name is Josh. As you can see, I'm just sitting in my car today. Uh, last video, I was outside. It was a beautiful day. I wish I could do it again today. It's a little overcast, a little more chilly, and I'm near a highway when I'm outside back there. So there was some ambient road noise that you could probably hear in the video. So I'm going to try sitting in my car. It makes for a nice little studio of its own because we got the doors and the windows uh, stopping any external sounds from coming in. So we'll see how this works. And a million uh, amateur YouTubers can't be wrong because I've seen so many videos of people sitting in their car and just talking to their phone alone. So I'm just going to join that group. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about influence and how you actually have it even if you think that you don't. Sorry, introverts, that includes you as well. Um, but I was thinking about a, a, a memory popped up in my head <clears throat> recently in which I, I was probably nine or ten years old, and I, was, I think I was out playing at the park, and I remember a mother and her son being there, and the son was probably like five years old, something like that. And that age gap between five years and I, I might have been eight or ten years old, um, the age gap there, um, when you're that age, it seems so big, right? I remember thinking, well, that's a little kid, and I'm, I'm starting to grow up. I'm, I'm in the double digits now. I remember thinking that when I was ten. But um, I remember I was running around, you know, going down the slides, jumping around, climbing on the jungle gym, and, and jumping from spot to spot, um, as I usually do. I don't know how I didn't break any bones or ankles or anything. I was always climbing all over stuff and jumping all over everything. Um, but when I finally got tired and I was about to leave, I remember I was walking away and I bent down to, or knelt down to tie my shoe. And I overheard the little kid say, mommy, can you tie my shoe? And it hit me in that moment, even though I was somewhere between eight and 10 years old that, oh, he, he saw me uh, lean over to tie my shoe and it made him want to tie his shoe and, and, and my behavior directly, um, affected his behavior or, or he directly imitated my behavior. And so uh, the idea of that level of influence hit me earlier today. It's, it's a silly example, right? It's a very small example of just two little kids and one seeing the other tie his shoe. So he wants to do it too. But it is pervasive throughout our lives in which our actions are under constant scrutiny. Our behavior is consistently being judged by the people around us and we're being watched whether we want to be watched or whether we like it or not. You walk into a supermarket and people turn their heads, they see what you're doing and some might like what you're doing and might imitate it. Um, the way you behave in your friend group might cause people to shift their behavior to, to uh, start imitating your behavior or to do the opposite because they don't like what they see. So and I think this is something we're thinking about because in today's age, uh, <laughs> in the current situation that society finds itself in, in which the news is constantly telling us that everything's awful, everything's bad, and everything's going down, <laughs> getting flushed down the toilet. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but um, I think it depends on where you are and what you're dealing with. You might be going through some bad stuff. You might be living in one of these cities that are consistently getting burned down by, uh, by Antifa or BLM or other domestic terrorist organizations. And so it might be bad for you and, and um, but for some of us, like we're just being convinced constantly that everything's bad, even though on a daily basis our lives are okay, right? And the reason I bring this up is because we can get drowned in the notion that everything's bad and there's nothing we can do about it. There's absolutely nothing we can do about it. I live over here in this area of the country and Minneapolis is burning over there and somehow that's my problem. It's not. What is my problem is my behavior and my attitude that influences the other people around me and what they do uh, um, that affects me as well, right? So I'm talking on a more local scale. So when we're thinking about what actually, what can you do to make things better? You, you, you can't save Minneapolis. That city's burning. That city's burning down. It's, it's over, right? <laughs> Basically. Um, 
but if you don't live there, there's not much you can do about it. What can, what can you do? You, you can influence in a positive way the people around you. You can go to your 9 to 5 job, your 40 hour a week job, and do a good job there and make a good impression on people and work to elevate the productivity of that company or of your team in that company. Even if you're you're just a, a line cook, I shouldn't say just a line cook, that can be a great uh, career as well. Even if you're a line cook and that's not where you wanna be and you wanna be somewhere else, you can be the best line cook and make the best food and positively influence the other line cooks and the waiters and waitresses and even your general manager. You have opportunities to influence those who are around you and to make things better for them and for yourselves and um, for your friend group and even when you walk into a supermarket you can walk in you can take off that mask and other people can see that you're taking off your mask and you're acting as though you're a free individual and that will influence others to do the same you can encourage and inspire bravery and, and courage of the other people around you so even if you think you don't have any influence if you are a human being and you interact with other people you have influence how do you want to use it? I'm going to take it back to games for a moment too, because again, I love games, right? And my gaming group and my friend group, my friends group, we love to play uh, these social deduction games like I mentioned. And these are very interesting games because the, the, the motion of the table or the direction of the table can, can s switch so quickly. And I never really noticed it. These are games where you're, you're debating with each other, you're sort of, I don't want to say arguing, but you're trying to discover the truth because there's a couple bad actors at the table. They've gotten roles that tell them, hey, you need to lie to your friends at the table, which you have to be careful who you play this with because you, you can't take it personally. But these games are a great example of how influence matters. Uh, there was one night my wife and I were driving home and I was telling her, wow, I really botched one of those games. I, I couldn't... I couldn't get my my thoughts through. I I couldn't I couldn't sway the table enough so that we had the votes we needed to win the game. And she told me, I don't think you realize it, but that whole table was going in one direction and then you said something and then the whole table started to go the other direction and she said, "I see that that happens all the time in this game." And I'm not playing myself up like I I'm able to sway the 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 opinions of everybody around me because I'm there are other people at the table who can do the exact same thing and I'm sure when they speak up that similar things happen but it's just another indicator that I, I wasn't even aware that I was influencing others clearly she saw that I was influencing others and I didn't even know it so be careful what you're doing on public be careful what you're doing in front of your friends, what you're doing at work, um, because people are watching, people are judging, and people are imitating. That's the most dangerous part of this. If you're doing things that that you don't want to be spread out into the world, maybe you should rethink some of those things that you're doing and adjust so that when people imitate you, they will be doing, they will bringing, they will be bringing more good into the world um, than they would have if they hadn't seen you. So. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Just a couple quick thoughts about the influence that you do have, whether you believe it or not. Um, I started the Rumble account, so uh, go and check that out. Um, I'm going to be opening this up to multiple platforms, and I'll announce when that's happening. Just I want to stay uh, fluid with the situation and um, fluid with how I'm moving forward with this channel, just because... Uh, there's a lot of censorship out there. YouTube likes to um, clamp down on normal people like me. So at some point, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, contingent upon their mercy. So start the Rumble account if you want. Go check it out there. And uh, I'll make sure to include the link in the description below. And as always, if you have anything that you want to say about this topic or want to start a conversation about it, add some comments. Um, you can send an email my way. The email's in the description as well. And... I look forward to the conversation. Uh, uh, hopefully this is giving you something to think about. And um, we'll see where I record next time. I'm in the middle of a move. And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be... Uh, I'm trying out new things as far as where can I record until I have an actual studio. So um, if this works well, maybe I'll just hang around in my car. But I, I probably can't drive it around because the way the camera is mounted right now... Check this out. If I were to drive... 
that's well maybe there's an improvement now you can't see my face so maybe that's better so maybe we'll try that next time um but for now i'm gonna sign off thanks for your time thanks for watching and we'll see you next time